He won. That was a very tough race. The polls were all showing that he was down and down substantially, and he won. And that one I did do, Pete Stauber of Minnesota, great guy, he's new, and ran a fantastic race. On the other hand, you had some that decided to, let's stay away, let's stay away. They did very poorly. I'm not sure that I should be happy or sad, but I feel just fine about it. Carlos Cubella, Mike Kaufman, too bad, Mike. Mia Love. I saw Mia Love. She called me all the time to help her with a hostage situation. Being held hostage in Venezuela. Uh, but Mia Love gave me no love. And she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. And Barbara Comstock was another one. I mean, I think she could have won that race, but she didn't want to have any embrace. For that, I don't blame her. But she, uh, she lost, substantially lost. Uh, Peter Roscom didn't want the embrace. Eric Paulson didn't want the embrace. And in New Jersey, I think he could have done well, but didn't work out too good. Bob Eugen, I feel badly, because I think that's something that could have been one. That's a race that could have been one. John Faso, those are some of the people that, you know, decided for their own reason not to embrace uh, whether it's me or what we stand for. But what we stand for uh, meant a lot to uh, most people. And we've had tremendous support and tremendous support of the Republican Party among the biggest support in the history of the party. I've actually heard at 93% it's a record, but I won't say that because who knows. But we've had tremendous support. Uh, America is booming like never before. Doing fantastic. We have Larry Kudlow here, and he said the numbers are as good as he's ever seen numbers at any time for our country. But he's a young man, so he hasn't seen that many numbers. Where's Larry? You're a young man, right, Larry? And you haven't been doing this too long, but they're as good as you've ever seen. And uh, we may have, if you have a question for Larry, we'll do that. But I want to send my warmest appreciation and regards to Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. We really worked very well together. We have been working very well together. We actually have a great relationship. People just don't understand that, which is fine. And also to uh, perhaps, looks like, I would think, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And I give her a lot of credit. She works very hard, and she's worked long and hard. I give her a great deal of credit for what she's done and what she's accomplished. Hopefully, we can all work together next year to continue delivering for the American people, including on economic growth, infrastructure, trade, lowering the cost of prescription drugs. These are some of the things that the Democrats do want to work on, and I really believe we'll be able to do that. I think we're going to have a lot, lot, of, uh, a lot of reason to do it. And, and I will say, just as a matter of business, I was with some very successful people last night. We were watching the returns. So if the Republicans won, and let's say we held on by two, or one, or three, it would have been very hard out of that many Republicans to ever even get support among Republicans, because there'll always be one or two or three people that for good reason or for bad reason or for grandstanding, we have that too. You've seen that. You've seen that. Plenty of grandstanding. But for certain reasons, that many people, you're always going to have a couple that won't do it. So that puts us in a very bad position. In other words, had we kept, and this is no, I'm saying this for a very basic reasons, common sense. It puts us in a very tough position. We win by one or two or three, and you'll have one or two or three or four or five even come over and say, you know, look, we're not going to go along with this. We want this, 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 and all of a sudden, we, we can't even, we wouldn't even be able to get it in many cases out of the Republicans' hands before we sent it on to the Senate. And now we have a much easier path because the democrats will come to us 
with a plan for infrastructure, a plan for health care, a plan for whatever they are looking at, and we'll negotiate. Then, as you know, it's been very hard in the Senate because we need essentially 10 votes from Democrats, and we don't get those votes because the Democrats do really stick together well. I don't agree with them on a lot of policy, but I agree with them on sticking together. They stick together good. So now we go into the Senate, we don't have the 10 votes, and what happens? It doesn't get passed. Even if it gets out of the House, it doesn't get passed. So under the new concept of what we're doing, I say, come on, let me see what you have. They want to do things. You know, I keep hearing about uh, investigations, fatigue. Like from the time, almost from the time I announced I was going to run, they've been giving us this uh, investigation fatigue. It's been a long time. They got nothing, zero. You know why? Because there is nothing. But they can play that game, but we can play it better. Because we have a thing called the United States Senate. And a lot of very questionable things were done between leaks of classified information and many other elements that should not have taken place and all you're going to do is end up in back and forth and back and forth and two years is going to go up and we won't have done a thing i really think and i really respected what nancy said last night about bipartisanship and getting together and uniting she used the word uniting and she used the the bipartisanship statement which is so important because that's what we should be doing so we can uh, look at us they can look at us then we can look at them and it'll go back and forth and it'll probably be very good for me politically i could see it being extremely good politically because i think i'm better at that game than they are actually but uh we'll find out i mean you know we'll find out or we can work together you can't do them simultaneously by the way just think of somebody says, oh you can do them both no you can't because if they're doing that, we're not doing the other, just so you understand. So we won't be doing that. But now what happens is we send it to the Senate, and we'll get 100% Democrat support, and we'll get some Republican support. And if it's good, I really believe we have Republicans with the approval process, and they will really help with the approval process. So it really could be a beautiful bipartisan type of situation. If we won by one or two or three or four or five, that wouldn't happen. And the closer it is, the worse it is. This way, they'll come to me, we'll negotiate, maybe we'll make a deal, maybe we won't. That's possible. But we have a lot of things in common on infrastructure. We want to do something on health care, they want to do something on health care. There are a lot of great things that we could do together. And now we'll send it up and we will really get, we'll get the Democrats and we'll get the Republicans or some of the Republicans and I'll make sure that we send something up that the Republicans can support. And they're going to want to make sure they send something up that the Democrats can support. So our great country is booming like never before, and we're thriving on every single level, both in terms of economic and military strength, in terms of development, in terms of GDP, we're doing unbelievably. I will tell you our trade deals are coming along fantastically. The USMCA and uh, South Korea is finished. Uh, USMCA has gotten rave reviews. Not going to lose companies anymore to other countries. They're not going to do that because they have a tremendous economic incentive, meaning it's prohibitive for them to do that. So it's not going to be like NAFTA, which is one of the worst deals I've ever seen, although we've made some other pretty bad ones too. Now is the time for members of both parties to join together put partisanship aside and keep the American economic miracle going strong. It is a miracle. We're doing so well. And I've said it at a lot of rallies. Some of you have probably heard it so much you don't want to hear it again. But when people come to my office, presidents, prime ministers, they all congratulate me almost the first thing on what we've done economically. Because it is really amazing. And our steel industry is back. Our aluminum industry is starting to do really well. These are industries that were dead. Our miners are working again. We must all work together to protect our military. We have to do that. To support our law enforcement, secure our borders, and advance really great 
policy, including environmental policy. We want crystal clean water. We want beautiful, perfect air. Air and water has to be perfect. At the same time, we don't want to put ourselves at a disadvantage to other countries who are very competitive with us and who don't abide by the rules at all. We don't want to hurt our jobs. We don't want to hurt our factories. We don't want companies leaving. We want to be totally competitive, and we are. And right now, we have just about the cleanest air, the cleanest water we've ever had, and it's always going to be that way. We insist on it. So environmental is very important to me. And with that, I'll take a few questions, if you'd like. Whoa. I didn't know what happened. All right, go ahead, John. That was a lot of hand shooting up so there's a lot to talk about. Mr. President, you talked at length just now about bipartisanship. Uh, the presumed Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, talked about it last night. I'm sure that's encouraging for the American people. But do you really believe, given what the relationship has been like between this White House and the Democratic Party, that that will happen? Will, I, I will think there's a good chance. I think there's a very good chance. If I could just finish it your... Will happen. Will you have to compromise on certain issues to the point where it could hurt you in 2020? And do you expect that when the Democrats take over the chairmanship of all these important committees, you're going to get hit with a blizzard of subpoenas on everything from the well, Russian investigation okay. to your cell phone use to your tax returns? Ready? Then you're going to, if that happens, then we're going to do the same thing and government comes to a halt. And I would blame them because they now are going to be uh, coming up with policy. They're the majority in the House. I expect uh, that they will come up with some fantastic ideas that I can support on the environment, on so many different things, uh, including prescription drug prices, which we've made a big dent in already, including some of the things that we're working on for the vets. We've gotten choice approved. We've got a lot of things approved, but they have some other elements that we want. There are many things we can get along on without a lot of trouble that we agree very much with them and they agree with us. I would like to see bipartisanship. I'd like to see unity. And I think we have a very good chance of, and maybe not on everything, but I think we have a very good chance of, of seeing that. Go ahead. Uh, one question on the lame duck, sir, and one on your cabinet. You toyed with the idea during the campaign of a shutdown before the midterms in order to secure border wall funding. Are you prepared to go on a shutdown strategy during the lame duck since this might be your last best chance? Not necessarily. To secure that? Sense. Look, I speak to Democrats all the time. They agree that a wall is necessary. A wall is necessary. And as you know, we're building the wall. We've started, but we should build it at one time, not in chunks. But you want much more money, and you want no, much sooner. No, we need the money to build the wall, the whole wall, not pieces of it all over. And we are doing it. Now we have the military. Now we have other elements of a wall that are pretty nasty, to be honest with you, but it's nevertheless, it's pretty hard to get through it. But no, I'd like to see the wall. Many of the people that we'll be dealing with, you know, in 2006, they approved the wall, essentially. It was a very strong border fence, but it was the same thing. And they all approved it. They all agreed. I have statements from every one of them. We have them saying, we need the wall. I mean, they sound like me. But we do need it because we have people coming, and I'm not just talking about the caravans. We have people coming through our border that you physically can't put that many people. It's a 2,000 mile stretch. You can't put that many people along that stretch to guard it. And even if you did, tremendous fighting would ensue. So uh, we need the wall. Many Democrats know we need the wall. And we're just gonna have to see what happens. I mean, I will be fighting for it. Uh, they have done everything in their power to make sure we, I got the military 700 billion and 716 billion. The wall is a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost of that. But their whole agenda has been to try not giving me anything for the wall. I really believe politically they're hurting themselves. I actually think politically that's a good thing for me, but I want to get the wall up because we need to. So, no shutdown scenario. I don't know the, can't for tell the mid, that. For the No, I, I can't book. commit to that, but it's possible. And can you give us clarity, sir, on your thinking currently, now after the midterms, about your attorney general and your deputy attorney general? Do they have long term job I'd security? I'd rather or? answer that uh, at a little bit different time. Uh, we're looking at a lot of different things, including cabinet. I'm very happy with most of my cabinet. Uh, we're looking at uh, different people for different positions. You know, it's very common after the midterms. 
I didn't want to do anything before the midterms. But I will tell you that, for the most part, I'm extremely happy with my cabinet. I think Mike Pompeo has fit in so beautifully. He's done an incredible job. How about your interior uh, secretary? Uh, we're looking at that, and I want I do want to study whatever is being said. Uh, is he in jeopardy? I think he's doing I think he's doing an excellent job, but we will take a look at that in a very strong and we'll probably have an idea about that in about a week. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Well, this is Go ahead, John. He gave me a fair interview the other day, so I might as well ask him a question. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and, and picking up there, you told me the other day that you are an open book. So I think I am an open book. So point blank, Democrats go after your tax returns. Will you try to block that, or will you allow them to have Well, it? look, uh, as I've told you, they're under audit. They have been for a long time. They're extremely complex. People wouldn't understand them. They're done by among the biggest and best law firms in the country. Same thing with the accounting firms. The accountants are a very, very large, powerful firm from the standpoint of uh, respect, the highly respected. Big firm. A, a great law firm, or you, would, you know it very well. They do these things. They put them in. But people don't understand tax returns. Now, I did do a filing of over 100 pages, I believe, mm -hmm. which is in the offices. And when people went and saw that filing and they saw the magnitude of it, they were very disappointed, and they saw the, you know, the detail. You get far more from that, and I guess we filed that now three times, but you get far more from that than you could ever get from a tax return. But when you're under audit, and I'm on a very continuous audit because there are so many companies, and it is a very big company, far bigger than you would even understand, but it's a, it's a great company, but it's big, and it's complex, and it's uh, probably feet high. It's a very complex uh, instrument, and I think that uh, people wouldn't understand it. But if I were finished with the audit, I would have an open mind to it, I would say that. But I don't want to do it during the audit. And, and really, no lawyer, even from the other side, they say often, not always, but when you're under audit, you don't have, you don't subject it to that. You get it done, and then you release it. So when that happens, if that happens, I would certainly have an open mind to so, it. So that means if the audit is still on, you will not turn over the tax returns, or you'll when, fight to when block it's under audit, no, Nobody would. Nobody turns over a return when it's under audit. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, please. One, I was tempted to ask you why you like Oprah so much, but I, I think I'll go on to the question that... Uh, why do I like Oprah? <laughs> what kind of a question is it? Yeah, I'm just asking. Just curious. But he's the real a, question... He's a comedian here. The real question I is, do like Oprah, by the way. I do. She was... Uh, a uh, person I knew well came to my place in Palm Beach often, and I have a lot of respect for her. Unfortunately, she didn't do the trick. The, cr the real question is, uh, you just sat up here and said that, um, from this podium, that it's, it's you're, are you offering a my way or highway scenario to the Democrats? You're no. saying that if, if, if they start investigating you, that you oh. can play that game oh, and investigate better them. Better than them. Can you, com can you compartmentalize that? And I that? think I know more than they know. Can you compartmentalize that and still continue to work with them for the benefit of the rest of the country? No. Or are you, are all bets off? No. If they do that, then it's just all it is is uh, a warlike posture. And yeah. so then, the, wait a minute, then the follow-up. You, you heard my answer. Go well, ahead. Well, since it's Jim, I'll let it go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I want to challenge you on, on one of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign. Uh, in, in the midterms. That here, this, here we go. That, well, if Let's you don't stop. mind, Let's Mr. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, I, Mr. President, I consider it to be an invasion. As you know, Mr. President, caravan was not an invasion. It's a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. Thank you for telling and me. And why, why, did you, why did you characterize it as such? Uh, because and I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But do you think that you demonized immigrants in not this election no, not to try to I want keep them I want them to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. You know, they have to come in, Jim, through a process. I want it to be a process. And I want people to come in, and we need the people. Your you know, campaign, wait, your campaign. Wait, wait. You know why we need the people, don't you? Because we have hundreds of companies moving in. We need the people. Right. But your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It for, it, but they it, weren't actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? They weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Right. These were these were people. This was an actual, you know, it happened a few days ago. 
And uh, they're hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of miles you know away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let me would be ask, much if better. I, if I okay, may ask enough. one other question, Mr. President, if I, if I may ask Peter, one other question, ahead. are you worried? Of, that's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, that's well, I was going to ask one other. The other folks that's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I, one other Peter, question, if I may ask on on the Russia investigation, are you concerned that? That you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may have Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter. Go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts Well, I'm not a big fan of yours either, so. I you, understand. To be honest. So let, me, so let me ask you a question if I can. You repeatedly you said. Are, you aren't the best. Mr. President, you repeatedly, oh, over the course okay, of. Okay, just sit down, please. Well, when you, when you report fake news, no. When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. Go ahead. Mr. President, over the course over the course of the last several days of the campaign, sir, sir, at the end of the campaign, you repeatedly said that Americans need to fear Democrats. You said Democrats would unleash a wave of violent crime that endangers families everywhere. Why are you because pitting very Americans? Weak on crime. Why Excuse are you me. pitting Americans Peter. against one another, sir? Peter, what are you trying to be him? No, Peter, I'm just asking let me, the just, let me just tell you. Very simple. Because they're very weak on crime because they have often suggested members and people within the Democrat Party at a high level have suggested getting rid of ICE, getting rid of law enforcement. That's not going to happen, okay? We want to be strong on the borders. We want to be strong on law enforcement. And I want to I want to cherish ICE because ICE does a fantastic job. So the the What they do for us is so, really, it's so unrecognized how good a job they do. So we want to take care of them, and we want to hold them very close because they do a good job. But the question, okay, to be clear, the, to be clear, though, the question is, very much. Why sit, are you sit down? But the question, but you didn't answer my question. Just very simply, the question is, why are you pitting Americans against one another, sir? I'm not. Is that how you view no, I'm not. citizens well, look, of this country? I'll tell you what. We won a lot of elections last night. We did very well last night. And but in many ways, I think it's, it's going to country. have. I think it's going to have a very positive impact. Uh, I watched NBC this morning. They didn't report it exactly correctly, but that's, you know, very, very, that's the fact with NBC. Nothing I can do about that. But I want this country to have protection. We want security in our country. I want security, Peter. I mean, you maybe don't think it's so important. And I think when you don't have it, you are indeed unleashing crime. I feel that. Go you ahead. said you would sign an executive order on birthright citizenship. Are you still going to sign the executive order on birth, birthright you'll citizenship? Answer, you'll ask me that question a little bit later. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. The investigation by the special counsel, Robert Mueller, has been going on since last spring. It's been uh, over it's your been a head. a long time. Yeah, it's been over your head, over Republicans' head, during the midterms as well. Is this an opportunity for you, Mr. President? to end that investigation? Would you consider uh, removing Mr. Mueller from his position? I could have ended it any time I wanted. I didn't. And there was no collusion. There was no anything. I didn't. Uh, they went after hackers in Moscow. I don't know about that. They went after people uh, with uh, tax problems from years ago. They went after people with uh, loans and other things. Had nothing to do with my campaign. Uh, this is a investigation where many, many millions of dollars has been spent and there's no collusion. It was supposed to be on collusion. There's no collusion. And I think it's, I think it's very bad for our country, I will tell you. I think it's a shame. And a poll came out today, by the way, from NBC, or at least I saw it on NBC, where a majority of the people do not agree with the Mueller investigation or it wasn't approved. They have approval and disapproval, and it had a, a much higher disapproval. Uh, it should end because it's very bad for our country. So if it's, it's bad, I, and I'm not just talking about the tremendous expense. And the other thing is, they should look at the other side also. They only look at one side. They're not looking at all of the things that came up during this investigation. They don't do that. They should also get people that can be fair, not 
13 or 14 or 17, I call them the angry Democrats. They are angry people. And it's a very unfair thing for this country. It's a very, very, forget about unfair to me, it's very bad for our country. Okay. So, Mr. President, if it's if it's unfair to the country and it's costing millions and millions of dollars, why don't you just give him the mic, please? I've answered the question. Go ahead, take the take one. Well, I'll give you voter. So I, I will give you voter suppression. You just have to sit down, please. Sit down. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I'll give you voter suppression. Take a look at the CNN polls. How inaccurate they were. That's called voter suppression. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm not. I'm not responding. I'm responding to. Excuse me. I'm not responding to you. I'm talking to this gentleman. Would you please sit down? Would, excuse me. Excuse me. Would you please sit down? Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Now that the uh, now that the House of Representatives very hostile. Has uh, it's such a hostile media. It's so sad. You ask me about. No. You rudely interrupted him. You rudely interrupted him. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Do your demands remain to sa the same to the United States Congress on uh, immigration in exchange for a DACA fix, in exchange for an amnesty for 1.7 million? Are you willing to change any of those demands that you gave to Congress earlier? I think we could really do something having to do with DACA. And what really happened with DACA, we could have done some pretty good work on DACA, but a judge ruled that DACA was okay. Had the judge not ruled that way, I think we would have made a deal. Once the judge ruled that way, the Democrats didn't want to talk anymore. So it'll see. We'll see how it works out at the Supreme Court. Do you still? Go ahead. From where? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Which which group? Where do you want me to take a question from? Yeah. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Take the. Oh. Either one. Either one. Okay. <laughs> or both. Okay. Are you together? <laughs> We're not together. Mr. President, how do you respond to critics who say that your message on the campaign towards minorities have been polarizing? I don't think it has if, been at all. But is the election of two mis Muslim women, one of them is veiled to the House, which is making history. Is this a rebuke of this message? I don't do you think? what you're saying. What? But is it a rebuke of this message? Do you think that this is more reflective of multi-ethnic and multicultural America? Uh, uh, that question. I can only say this. You look at the employment and unemployment numbers for African Americans, for Asian Americans, for Hispanic Americans, they're at a historic high. Uh, a poll came out recently where my numbers with Hispanics and with African Americans are the highest, the best they've ever been. That, had, that took place two or three days ago, the poll. Uh, the, I have the best numbers with African American, Hispanic American. That, I've ever had before, and you saw the same poll. So I can't say that. I can say this. You look at median income, you look at all of the employment and unemployment numbers, uh, they're doing the best they've ever done. And it, it reflects, it really is very reflective in the polls. Yes, sir. Mr. President, I'm from Brooklyn, so you'll understand that. Uh, my question is on health care. How is it possible to keep premiums down and cover pre-existing conditions without the individual mandate to fund it? Well, first of all, what we're doing, and we're, if you look at the Department of Labor, also uh, Secretary, separately, separate, Secretary Azar, what they've done, they've come up with some incredible health care plans, which is causing great competition and driving the prices right down. But we are getting rid of the individual mandate because it was very unfair to a lot of people. But at the same time, we're covering the people that need it. But the individual mandate was a disaster because people that couldn't necessarily afford it were having to pay for the privilege of not having to pay for health care. And it was bad health care at that. So we are working many plans for health care. We're creating tremendous competition. We had Obamacare repealed and replaced. Unfortunately, one person changed his mind at the last moment. And we had no Democrat support. I have to say that. We didn't have one vote. We would have repealed it replace it, we would have had a large-scale, very good health care plan. Now we're doing it a different way. We're doing it a different way. Uh, but getting rid of the individual mandate is a very, very popular thing and a very important thing, and people very much appreciate it. Go ahead. No, no, that's, that's enough. Go ahead, please. Thanks, sir. Uh, two questions. One, I know you went through the results, and you obviously studied them late last night. 
What lesson did you learn most from looking at those results? Was there one thing that as you kind of reviewed them that you'll change your strategy, not just for Congress, but kind of going forward and then just to follow up? Well, I think the results that I've learned and maybe confirmed, I think people like me. I think people like the job I'm doing, frankly. Because if you look at every place I went to do a rally, I couldn't do it with everybody. Uh, but And it was very hard to do it with uh, people in Congress because there's just too many, would be too many steps. But uh, I did it with the Senate. I did it with Andy Barr, as you know. And, and he won. He won a very tough race against McGrath. It was a very, very tough race in Kentucky. And he was down quite a bit. And I went there, and we had a tremendous, very successful, some of you were at that rally. And he won that race. But I could only do that so much because there were just so many players involved. But I did focus on the Senate, and we had tremendous success with the Senate. Really tremendous. Can I ask you one more, que one more question? Sorry, Mr. Mr. President, one more question. Go, my, I'm so sorry. Sir. It's a rare opportunity. Uh, a lot of people are going to be rushing to Iowa, rushing to New Hampshire. You know that the Democrats are already looking ahead to 2020. Do you want to lock down your ticket right now, sir? Will the Vice President be your running mate in 2020? Well, I haven't asked him, but I hope so. Where are you? Mike, will you be my running mate? Uh huh? Stand up, Mike, please. Raise your right hand. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Will you? Thank you. Okay, good. The, uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was unexpected, but I feel very fine. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Going back to the Russia investigation and potential investigations from the now democratically uh, Democratic majority in Congress, some say that you could stop all this by declassifying... I could. I could, st I could fire everybody right now. But I don't want to stop it, because politically I don't like stopping it. Yeah. Uh, it's a disgrace. It should have never been started, because there was no crime. Uh, it is, everybody has conflicts. They all have conflicts over there that are uh, beyond anything that anybody's ever seen in terms of conflicts, uh, from uh, the fact that people ask for jobs, from the fact that they have very good friends on the other side, like really good friends like Comey, who, by the way, lied and leaked, and also leaked classified information. Nothing happened there. It might, perhaps, maybe something's happening that I don't know about. I stay away from it. But you know what I do? I let it just go on. They're wasting a lot of money, but I let it go on because I don't want to do that. But you're right. I could end it right now. I could say that investigation is over. But it's, it's really, um, it's a disgrace, frankly. And it's an embarrassment to our country. It's an embarrassment to the people of our country. And it's too bad. Go ahead. What about the de de declassification of the documents? Some say that that would clear well, it all up. We're looking at that. No, no, no we're looking at it? that very seriously. Declassification, okay. we're looking yeah. at very seriously. Okay, can I ask one more question? It's amazing how people on the other side just don't want those documents declassified. But no, we're looking at that very carefully. Hey. I certainly wanted to wait till after the midterms. Can I ask you one more question, Mr. President? Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. You have campaigned as a pro-life president. You have defended the rights of unborn children. You now have a divided Congress. It's unlikely to pass any right. pro-life pro bills. Very tough issue. How, how are you going to push forward your pro-life agenda? Just going to push. Oh, I've been pushing. I've done a very good job, too. You're very happy with me. But it's a tough issue for the two sides. There's no question about it. But what are you going to do? There is great to, What am I going to do? I, I won't be able to explain that to you because it is an issue that is a very divisive, polarizing issue. But there is a solution. I think I have that solution and nobody else does. What we're going to be we're going to be working on that. Yes, go ahead, please. She took your place, but that's okay. Mr. President, just a quick question uh, on rural America. In states like Indiana, North Dakota, folks turned out for Republican candidates. Could you talk a little bit about what this means for your agenda in terms of trade and the farm bill? Uh, the Farm Bill is working really well. I mean, we could have had it approved any time, but we're looking to get work rules approved. The farmers want it. I'd like it. The problem is the Democrats are not giving us the 10 votes that we need. We are. Everybody wants it. The farmers want it. But the Democrats are not approving the Farm Bill with work rules. We could have it very fast without the work rules, but we want the work rules in, and the Democrats just don't want to vote for that. So at some point, they'll have to pay maybe a price, Jeff. Yes, 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. You. Have you seen any evidence that Russia or China intervened in yesterday's election? Well, we've gonna, we're going to make a full report, and unlike the previous administration, we've done a lot of work on that issue. And uh, if you look, uh, speak with the FBI, speak with the Department of Justice, speak to Homeland Security, and we've spent a lot of time. It gets very little coverage in the papers. I mean, you cover the nonsense part, but you don't cover the important. This is very important. And we have been working very hard on China and Russia and everybody else looking into our elections or meddling with our elections, but uh, people tend not to write about it. But we have worked very hard, as you probably are. What do you, what do you intend to say, sir, to President Xi and to President Putin when you meet with them later this month? Well, I have a good relationship with both. Uh, I know uh, President Xi better, but I think I have a very good relationship with both. I actually had a very good meeting in Russia that you people didn't agree with, but that's okay. It doesn't much matter, obviously. But the fact is that uh, I had a very, very good meeting, a very, very good meeting with President Putin, uh, and a lot was discussed about security, about Syria, about uh, Ukraine, uh, about the fact that President Obama allowed a very large part of Ukraine to be taken. And right now, you have submarines of that particular parcel that we're talking about. That was that was President Putin who, who annexed Crimea. So that was President Obama's regime. That was during President Obama, right? That was, that was not during me. But it was, it was President during, No, that Putin was President Obama. the annexation. No, no. It was President Obama that allowed it to happen. It had nothing to do with me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News. Um, you're a man who likes to win, but last night was not an absolute victory for you. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I thought it was a... I thought it was a very close to complete victory. When you look at it from the standpoint of negotiation, when you look at it from the standpoint of deal making, because it's all about deal making, again, if we had the majority and we had one or two or three votes to play with, we would never, we would have been at a standstill. I really believe that we have a chance to get along very well with the Democrats. And if that's the case, we can do a tremendous amount of legislation and get it approved by both parties. So I consider it to be, hey, look, I won Georgia. Uh, President Obama campaigned very hard in Georgia. Oprah Winfrey campaigned very, very hard all over the television. I said, this is going to be tough. I only had me. I didn't have anybody else. And I went to Georgia. And we had one of the largest crowds that anybody here has seen ever at a political rally. And you know what? He won. And he won actually by you know, pretty good margin. He won. And then we went to Florida. And they had celebrities all over the place. And a man who happens to be a very smart person uh, was running, Ron DeSantis. And people didn't give him a chance. And I went and we had, we did some great work. And they're going to have a great governor of the state of Florida. And then we talked about the Senate. And a lot of money was pouring in for the Democrat. This is a man who's been in office for like 44 years or something. This is a man who's like a professional at getting elected and being in office. So he's not, Bill Nelson, not easy to beat, okay? And, but they had a lot of celebrity coming out for Nelson. They had everybody coming out for Nelson. And Rick Scott won, and I helped him. And I think we've done an amazing job. And you could look at many other places. You just take a look at some of the other places. Uh, and we just got the word that in Iowa, you have a governor who just got extended, who spent a camp, just got extended, and, and numerous other places. I think it was a great victory. I, I'll be honest. I think it was a great victory. And actually, some of the news this morning was that it was, in fact, a great victory. But if you look at it from the standpoint of gridlock, I really believe there's going to be much less gridlock because of the way this is going than any other. Way. <laughs> Sit down, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me ask you about one of the campaign promises you made down the stretch, which was a 10% tax cut for the middle class. Yeah. You just talked about gridlock. Democrats, they now run the House, yeah. Ways, House yeah. Ways and Means Committee. If it means a tax cut of some kind for the middle class, but that means raising rates elsewhere, corporations, on the wealthiest, is that a trade-off that you would be willing to make, well, and able to be. enact the middle you class? You know tax? that this will have to be now uh, 
proposed because if we did it now, we don't have the votes in the Senate. You don't have, we need, we would need 10 Democrat votes. We probably couldn't get them. If we could, we could pass it very easily in the House, but there's no reason to waste time because you don't have the votes in the Senate. But if the, uh, as an example, if the Democrats come up with an idea for tax cuts, which I'm a big believer in tax cuts, I would absolutely pursue something, even if it means some adjustment. Some adjustment on which side, the corporate, the individual? Yeah, to make it possible. But I would love to see a tax cut for the middle class. Uh, now, that's going to be their decision. They're going to have to make that decision. As you know, if we bring it up to the Senate, we'd need Democrat votes, 10, and we don't have those 10 votes. And just because the markets would, and just because the markets would want to know, sir, some adjustment, would that be 1, 2, 3% oh, on I, either I'm side? Not it's too early. I'm just saying, I would be certainly willing to do a little bit of an adjustment. Go ahead, behind. Thank you. you go Thank ahead, you. please. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, Two questions. One is, um, you had talked about leaders who had called to congratulate you. Did President Putin call to con congratulate you? And will you, in fact, meet with him at lunch uh, this coming weekend? Well, as I understand it, we're having, and I guess a lot of you are going over, we're having a lunch for numerous countries. I'll be there. I believe President Putin is going to be there. We don't have anything scheduled. Uh, I, I don't think we have anything scheduled in Paris. Uh, and I'm coming back very quickly. I'm going over. This is a great event. This is an important, uh, really, this is going to be a very important and I think a very beautiful ceremony. I'm looking forward and to going and we're representing the incredible heroes of the world, but the heroes of our country from World War I. And so I'll be going there and I am very proud to go there. Did, did he call I don't, you? I don't think we have time set aside for that meeting. Now, with that being said, we're very shortly meeting again at the G20 where he'll be there and I'll be there, and that's where we're actually looking forward to be. And, we and will be having we will be having a lunch, but I think there are many people there. And did he call you to congratulate you? And if I could also just invite you, since this is a quite a gathering we've got here, to go ahead and talk about the staff changes that you expect in the White House while we're here. We're eager to hear about them. Is well, General, I, I is General Kelly going to stay as on? We make, as we make changes, we'll sit down and talk to you about it. I mean, there's no great secret. A lot of a lot of uh, administrations make changes after midterms. Uh, I will say that for the most part, I'm very, very happy with this cabinet. We're doing a great but, job. But what, what, about, in the White House? what about in the White House, sir? You, you've got a lot of White House staff. Some have been talking about leaving. General Kelly has been uh, well, rumored okay. to be leaving. No, people the leave. People leave. And is that going to happen? People sir? leave. I, don't, I, I haven't heard about John Kelly. But no, people, people leave. They come in. They're here. It's a very exhausting job. Although I love doing it, I must tell you, but it's exhausting for a lot of people. I'm surprised at a lot of people. They start off, they're young people, they're there for two years, and they're old by the time they leave. It's quite exhausting, but but I love doing it, and I, I'll tell you, uh, there will be changes, nothing monumental okay. from that standpoint. I don't think very much different than most administrations, but, and we have, I mean, we have many people lined up for every single position. Any position, everybody wants to work in this White House. We are a hot country. This is a hot White House. We are a White House that people want to work with. Okay. Uh, no, no, please, behind you. Behind you, go ahead. This has been a very challenging campaign. It, it is, this has been, a very, been a, very, it's been a very challenging campaign. It has campaign. involved this. quite a lot of abuse and a lot of violence. People have died during the course of this campaign. Right. Is there any way in which you think the temperature could be lowered? Perhaps peace could break out with the media. Perhaps your bipartisan relationships across the House and the Senate may now produce some change, or are we going to have more of the it, same? It's a very fair question. Look, I would love to see unity and peace and love and any other word you want to use. Uh, and obviously, I think we had to, especially at this particular juncture, we had to wait till after the midterms are over. Now they're over. If they would cover me fairly, which they don't, which they don't, I'm not saying that in a hostile way. I get extremely inaccurate coverage. I can do something that's fantastic and they'll make it look like not good. Uh, and and I don't mind being having bad stories. If I make a mistake, cover it. I'd like you to cover it fairly, but cover it. But when you do something terrific, Look how little the economy is talked about. A poll came out this morning talking about how little the three networks, I don't think they included CNN, uh, 